Lounge and Sun. Welcome back for another edition of the Comic Lounge Podcast, guys. I am your co-host, Dylan, and with my other host, Ryan. Ryan, say hi to the people. What's up, guys? And today we have a very special guest, one of the first ladies of the Comic Lounge. We have Jen. Hey! Wonderful. Yeah, today we're going to be talking about some really dope stuff. Uh, we, uh, our weekly read was Bitter Root, which I was fucking late to the party for, yeah, but yeah. I absolutely love it. I, I late than I'm, never. I'm totally caught up. I read all eight issues. It's amazing. It's, it's dope, dude. What the fuck? Yeah. All right. Anyway, and uh, we're also going to be talking about more about comics. And thank God this week we don't have to talk about a, a creator being exposed for being a trash bag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank God. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, the recent acquisition of Marvel acquiring the Predator and Alien contracts and uh, licenses. Hell uh, yeah. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. We're going to talk about we're going to talk about comics next week, which are pretty stacked. Like this week we didn't have any uh, Marvel or DC comics, which is really weird, but a lot of good image titles, so we're good with that. It's okay. And, it was a new week of Kirkman instead of a new week of comics. Yeah, it was freaking a wave of Kirkman, dude. Negan yeah. lives and freaking firepower. Before we get into bitter, what did you uh what did you think of Firepower? I mean, I, I already read it. I don't know, I read, Jen, if you read I, it. I read the prelude, the story of how, the, what's his name, got to, I, I mean, I read it months ago before the quarantine. Oh, right. Um, okay, so you had already read it then. Yeah. You were like me. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was great. Dude, I reread it. It's even better. Did, this, did uh, you? On second read. Did you read the, the free comic book day edition? The, yeah. the, the issue? Yeah, oh, yeah. I didn't read that yet. Yeah, I, yeah, I read, read it. I was in the middle of uh, this old uh, Ed Brubaker book, Dead Enders, um, from mm -hmm. Vertigo. And, yeah. But yeah, I, I read it, and I reread the, the prelude, even though I, I had already read it prior. And it's, dude, it's really fucking good. The first issue was, was good, too. I know that um, he's going to, when issue two drops, they're going to release number one that's not the free comic book day edition. Yeah. And it's going to have extra back matter and a new cover. Oh, tight. So... I mean, like, uh, and, and the fucking free comic is going for like eight dollars on eBay. It's 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 fucking ridiculous. It's so. Did you hear about you hear about Negan lives like Negan lives. You know how like the comic shops got him for free, like, right? Yeah. And yeah, the comic shops got the guy got the you know the gold one and the silver the silver foil covers for free. Like uh -huh. friggin' dude, I checked eBay. Like the gold one is going for like two hundred bucks. I know. I had an arg. <laughs> I, <laughs> I had an argument with with Nick. And, um, oh, by the way, Jen, Nick is the manager at the co uh, comic shop, just so you know. Um, oh, okay. But yeah. I've known him for years, too. So, but, so like, I, like, I make it a personal mission of mine to, to start at least one argument with him every shift. Just, <laughs> just because, like, it, it's not, like, to, like, really argue, but, like, I enjoy bantering back and forth with him. And so, like, I brought up the point. I was like, well, the fucking comics were free, like. You know, like you guys are fucking <laughs> selling them. Like, I'm like, don't you think it's kind of like I can see on a consumer side, like I'd be mad too. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you guys yeah. are charging more. He's like, well, that's what they're for. You know what I mean? Like, that's why Kirkman made those variants because he understands that variants can cost more. And the whole point is to help comic book stores make money. I was like, yeah, but I can still see. And like, I kept going back and forth with him. And like, I could see he was starting to get mad. And then I was like, Nick, and this is like right when I walked. <laughs> Walked to the door on Wednesday too, and I was like, "I'm just trying to fight with you, dude. I'll, I'll, I'll let it go, you know." But yeah, I mean, yeah, I see, I, I see the point. Like, there's a shop in New York. There are a, co a coffee shop slash comic book shop, and oh, I've been in dream. I, I've been in touch with <laughs> yeah, and I've been in touch with them for like over a year. They started following me, and I had reached out to them asking them advice because I said I want to do something similar. But anyway, so like. There, they randomly put them in subs boxes. The oh, that's gold. cool. So I think that's that's a dope idea, you know. But that's how they are with all their variants, their incentive variants. They will randomly yeah. put them in a, in a subs box. They they will not charge extra for variants where other stores do now. But again, like I can see, like as a retailer, right? Like you're paying more if it's a one in fifty. You have to order fifty comics. To get that yeah. cover. So you're spending more. Whereas maybe you wouldn't order 50 if you want that cover, you have to. So you have to spend more. It makes sense. You have to sell it for more. And then you're also thinking like, well, fuck, these people that come in 
are buying it so they can flip it, if I'm selling it at cover price, I'm literally just putting money in their pocket. Yeah. So I can kind of see it, you know, but I don't know. I, I think it's a it's a touchy subject. I mean, as as you know, as I saw when the look in Nick's eyes when I was <laughs> when I was all the when horror when I was starting to piss him off, you know, I was, I, I, I just started laughing. I was like, you, I, I was like, I'm really just doing this to fucking just to fucking fight with you right now. So we yeah, can just, fucking Nick. I miss those guys. Oh man, but yeah, I mean. I get it. I understand. I understand the need to want it to, to want to have to do that. And also, like, you know, let's say let's say a person does get it. Let's say a person does pay like 40, 50 bucks for the one in 50 or the one in 25 or whatever. Right. And friggin, you know, like they, they, they can essentially make their all their money back. So it's not like, you know, it's not like anyone's really kind of like losing out. You know what I mean? Except for the person who decides to buy it from the reseller. But, you know, I mean. I think right now, like, dude, let let the comic shops make their money. <laughs> like, like they they got to stay yeah, I mean, somehow. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That's, that was the whole point of Kirk. Yeah, doing it. I mean, right now, like, I, one of the guys in my comic shop, like, I literally work with this guy uh, once a week, every week, and he's always trying to get me to buy a freaking Jon Snow sideshow collectibles, and I fucking don't want it. But he's like, <laughs> Dylan, Dylan, you need it. And look, we'll even throw in John Wick too, so that way you could have a collection of Johns, Jon Snow, John Wick. I'm like, I don't want it. <laughs> I don't want any of it. <laughs> But, you know, like, for me, like, I get that uh, a comic store needs to, like, sell it and everything like that. I don't mind, I wouldn't mind purchasing um, something like that from a comic store. What triggers me is the people, uh, a reseller, send, selling it on eBay for, like, $400 more than what yeah. it's supposed to be. You know, like, that's, yeah. the, for me, that's the actual problem. It's because they're not purchasing it for the right reasons. They're purchasing it to flip it on the side and it's the consumer it's us the, the the comic fans that actually pay the price for that you know yeah especially right now like i think comic stores needs our help so i don't i wouldn't mind like buying it from a comic store it's really just when you you find it on ebay afterward that's just really annoying like these people don't even have it in their hand and but they're that's selling the problem you know yeah, they're, it's they're just crazy. like sorry sorry for saying that but they're just fucking us over you know like they're just trying to get our money because they know we're going to purchase it no matter what because we are fans, you know? Yeah. yeah. Jen, you can curse as much as you yeah. want. You say fuck I, so much. Don't even I was just going to say, we just got Jen's first fuck on the podcast. So yeah. <laughs> Milestone. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, no, I, I totally get it. I, and and it, it sucks. I hate resellers. It's kind of like, uh, it, it's like a slap in the face. Like, you know, when they announced um, the Doctor Doom uh, Marvel Legends? Like, dude, on eBay, they were going for, like, easily 200 bucks. I bought mine for 30 <laughs> like, yeah. like, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, it's pretty stupid. You know, I, I, I'll be honest, though. I'm not going to sit here and bullshit with you guys. I, I was getting Batman, right? And then mm -hmm. Punchline came out. And I was like, you know what? I fucking don't really want to keep reading this book. But this book is going for some money on eBay, so... I yeah, mean, but, like, but I, but I didn't buy it with the intention. No, you know but I mean? no, like, no. But the thing is, the, the thing is, been subbed to Batman since freaking forever. So it's not like you know, you know, you know what I mean. It's not like you know, you literally just signed up for the sub, like two issues before Punchline was gonna come out. You know what I mean? You know, you're not a speculator. You're not like sending. You're not sending Riley in at like five minutes after you buy uh, buy a comic. <laughs> to fucking, That's to a good fucking, idea, dude. It happened at my store, and I'm then we got a bad. <laughs> and, and we got a bad review on Yelp for it. Like the guy literally said, "Oh, Arsenal Comics hates kids." <laughs> like, wow. Yeah, because look, okay. First off, we've seen this guy before with his little girl, and this is uh, when uh, that Captain Marvel issue came out with uh, the first appearance of Star. <laughs> okay. And yeah. and like he bought it. Like, it was totally fine. It was in his pull, whatever. But we knew he this fool was a speculator because he'd buy like variants at like about like, uh, like a few variants at a time and you know multiple issues and all of that. So he was definitely a speculator. But literally like a few couldn't have been more than an hour. He sends his daughter in to buy Star, and we're like, no, we can't give this to you. Like it's it literally says on the pull uh, on the on the rack like one per customer, and we know this is going to your dad. Like we know you don't read Captain Marvel, little girl. <laughs> like, oh, like, oh. Dang, dude, you're fucking cold, bro. How old is she? Oh, no, she's like ten. I didn't say it. I was there, uh, but I didn't say it. Like, I'm, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be real with you, bro. I would have been like, I don't give a shit. Take the fucking book. 
<laughs> take the fucking book. You know, if you're fucking, if you're gonna go that extra step, bro, you're gonna send your kid in. Power to you, bro. You know, <laughs> that's that's a whole new level. Because because I think I might I might use that little trick in the future if I need to. You know, <laughs> the balls, the balls on that man. Yeah, I mean, fuck, that's 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 bold, bro. Yeah, it is. I'll send you. I'll send you the Yelp review. It's pretty funny. Yeah, please. I, you know me. I love Yelp reviews, dude. I still. I don't even work at the restaurant anymore, and I still fucking scour their Yelp reviews just to see what people say, dude. Because it's fucking funny. It's uh, okay. All yeah. right. Let's go ahead. So let's start. Let's talk about bitter root. All right. Cool. You, uh, Jen. Since you're the guest, you want to start off. Let us know what you thought of it. Yeah. Uh, sure. Well. I, I loved it. It's uh, actually, I think it's a really awesome comics, especially with what's happening right now in the world. I think it has a really like interesting point of view. It has a really great writing style. I just, I loved it. I love Berg. Dude, what the fuck? I was going to say the same <laughs> thing. I, his, I, dude, that fool will have you going to a dictionary to understand what the fuck he's saying. Because yeah, he no, I, 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 I all the time. I kind of I kind of pride myself in like a high vocabulary, uh, and honestly, I I go back to some of his caption bubbles, and I notice <laughs> like I have to like literally sound out every word to make sure I'm pronouncing it correctly. Yeah, <laughs> like, I know. Same yeah. here. It takes me longer to read the book when that falls in, in, the, in yeah. the pages. Indubitably. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I, I I love this. Like the setting for me was what kind of sold me on the book. It's a trip because 100 I, years ago. I, yeah, I love <laughs> I love period pieces, you know? Like, I, I love, like, history was always one of my favorite subjects. Even, like, history that's not necessarily that old, you know? Yeah. Like, early early America in the 20s, the 50s, 40s, all that kind of stuff. Because I, I love, like, yeah. I, I love 40s detective stories, shit like that. So, the 20s Harlem re- Renaissance, I thought, was a very interesting choice for them to use. And getting to see, like, Sanford Green's depictions of 1920s Harlem was... Is is a feast for the eyes, you oh, know. Yeah. Like I love his fucking art. I mean, he's one of my, probably one of my favorite artists that I've discovered in the last ten years. I I mean, I going back, like I've seen his, I had seen his art, but his style has changed so much that I didn't recognize it. And you know, his Power Man and Iron Fist, with you know David Walker, who's also one of the co writers on the book, like that book made me a fan. Like, I fucking love his art, and I love the message behind the series, too, because, you know, like, it touches on themes of racism and hate because the Jinnu, which are the people that are infected, like, they're infected by hate, which is how these, like, demons, like, kind of take them over, right? Yeah. So it's dealing with the hate and racism against fucking, like, black people. For the most part, it's mostly white people that are infected, and it even goes into the, you know, when that KKK fucking group in the yeah. <laughs> I love <laughs> that scene. Yeah, me too. Oh, Ford dude, Ford's a badass motherfucker, dude. Like he's he's my favorite character. He's I love my Ford. favorite too. Like I yeah, love Ford him. is great. Yeah. Ford's and then, great, but I think I think I think that like the big payoff is gonna be Cullen, dude. I don't know what's oh, yeah. happening with this fool, but I think Cullen's me gonna either. be the fucking one. Yeah. Yeah. And I and you know like they're their root work, which is, it's just really cool. Dude. I just love all the little fucking intricacies of, of the family dynamic and, and mm. like how this family has been f- battling demons for years, right? Yeah. By making these potions to fucking uh, cure the, in- or the infected. And Ma Etta, dude, I fucking love her. She is so she, badass. You know what she I mean? Reminds, she reminds me of my homie's mom, Mama Jackie. We, we literally call her Mama Jackie. Like, that's everybody's Mama Jackie. Yeah, that's... <laughs> but, you know, like, I love how she's like, she's like, the men are supposed to be the brawn, but the mm-hmm. women are the brains. You yeah. know? Like, yeah. And I thought that, that that line was fucking... It's just, it's powerful. And then she has another powerful line, too, that's uh, towards the end of this volume, where she says, the same gears don't turn their backs on folks. And need. How do you pronounce their last name? I've been, I've been, I've been trying to figure that out. I think it's Sangir. Okay, because yeah. it's definitely, it's definitely like Southern Creole or something, right? Like because I don't know how to pronounce it. Yeah, I was gonna go back and listen to my old interview with David Walker, but I just I forgot because he pronounced okay. it in there, and I was like, fuck, I should have listened to it again. But whatever. Uh, you know, just like that, they they take care of folks in need, and and that ain't the way they do things. They don't just leave people in need. And like, fuck, dude, like. 
each character is so well thought out and their personalities instantly, you get a feel for them. You know what oh, I yeah. mean? Their introductions. Mm-hmm. And... I really love how, like, uh, like uh, for me, I, I don't know it's, it's, if I'm crazy or not, but for me, it, I was really feeling like the family is really, like, humble, you know? Like, they, yeah, yeah. they do great things. They are really great at what they're doing. They're saving lives. They're really, like, they're protecting people, but it's never, like... I'm the shit, you know, it's never, yeah. I'm the best person. They're just doing it because that's what they do. And for me, that was yeah. one of the greatest things about this book, like the character's writing is that they, it was so genuine, you know? Yeah, there's no yeah. ego. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Only amongst themselves, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, but, that's, but that's typical family dynamic, though. You know? Yeah. It's always going to be, yeah. like, like, you know, like, especially how they treat, uh, tra- treated, like, Uncle Enoch. You know, like, <laughs> oh, he's so like you know, oh, he's he's the reason why freaking your parents died. Like, damn, bro, like you're gonna blame it all on one guy? Yeah, like, well, because he was dabbling in magic, right? That's yeah, what they blamed him. For. Yeah, and then the uh, the guy that they're going up against, the antagonist, that fucking yeah. fool. Like, I well, we don't really see it in this volume, but I love where his where his character goes into the next. Oh, 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 you're yeah. talking about Walter Sylv- Sylvester? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 dude, Walter Sylvester. Yeah, Because I, I think am. this is also <sighs> touching on the Tulsa, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yep, the Tulsa, the Tulsa riots. They called it the Tulsa riots. Right, so it's, also t- so it's also touching on that, dude. Like, they, they got so many fucking little seeds that they're planting in this volume that you kind of see coming up in, the, in what will be volume two. But, you know... Of course, they got like a really great editor on the book now, Shelley Bond. Yeah. You know, yeah. like they brought her on, which I think was a fucking great addition. You know, and yeah. the story behind how that came. If you're you guys are listening, you can listen to the Shelley Bond interview, and she says how she got on that project. Hell yeah! I think the the direction that the series is going, like Jen said, you know, the timing is just it's perfect. You know, like, yes, Volume 1 came out before, um, mm-hmm. but, but it's rel- still actual, you know, right. like, it, it was written, like, sur- around, like, the history, historical facts in the past, but today, it's so, it's still so accurate in some ways, you know? Yeah, it, which yeah. is, in a way, it's, you know, it's fucking sad. Um, yeah, it, it's really that, sad, that but this that's shit the is still happening. The right, and then... For it to be released, you know, after like the quarantine and stuff, and then during this Black Lives Matter movement resurging, you know, like we had Bitterroot, what was it? Was it eight, Dylan? Yeah, Bitterroot eight, eight, yeah. and Excellent Seven both dropped. Yeah. On the first week of comics coming back, right? Mm-hmm. Or or no, not the first week of comics. When the when the Black Lives Matter was was going. Yeah, on, it was you know? it was literally it was literally that week when like everything was like crazy all the all the i'm not i'm not talking crazy like the riots i'm talking about crazy in the sense that this is when we had like the most protesters this is when like lo- like yes. hollywood boulevard was literally flooded with people this is when freaking just around the time when they painted black lives matter in front of the white house like it's, it's it's been it's crazy it's crazy the timing of it is just wow like you couldn't you you, you couldn't tell me that this shit wasn't meant to be you know what i mean yeah yeah As I, like, like like ryan was saying though like the period pieces like i love it i, I love period pieces too and what, what really grasps me about this is sophie dyson dude her coloring on this oh amazing it's great it's so good you know what it reminds me of you guys remember like when you were a kid like and you'd like watch like something like looney tunes or something and there'd be those uh just little segments it'd be like f- four or five minutes but it would just have like no dialogue but it would just have all jazz music it would just be like a sequence of stuff happening and then they'd use like those purples those bright oranges with like a backdrop of like uh, of, of a lot of shadow and it would just you know just complete i feel like it just completely encapsulated you know that whole 1920s jazz feel like you know what i mean there's also there's also a splash page i forget what issue it was in but they passed by a billboard in front of a in front of the movie theater and it was uh, it, on the billboard. It was Richard Gershwin, and this fool is like this awesome, awesome jazz composer from the twenties. And I'm just like, man, they really went all out on this. They know exactly what the hell they're talking about. 
I'm not trying to correct you, but uh, Sophie Dodgson is the colorist on the new volume. Oh. Rico Renzi oh, was the colorist on volume one. Yeah, she came on with oh, issue six. Oh, Rico Renzi, too. His work on freaking Sea yeah. Stars was freaking awesome. Oh, I know. Very underrated. I mean, yeah. you know, color, colorists are underrated, you know, in my opinion, too. I think that they add so much. Magic. They're, they're simply magical. You know, they bring the book to life. Yeah. I personally prefer, like, colored comics rather than black and white, just because, for me, it's so much more, like, interesting to the eyes, you know? Yeah, yeah I, I see that, Jen, and, and I agree. But there's a lot to be said about good black and white comics. Yeah, when you're, when you're when you're using gray tones and stuff, I think this is this is mostly like old stuff though, like the '80s and shit that I've read. You know, like especially like the old Ninja Turtle comics from the '80s when they first came out. Like they're amazing to look at. With amazing go- with the god tier freaking cross hatching. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but coloring definitely, especially with the technology that we have now. Mm-hmm. is is on another level I, I i interviewed a colorist yesterday and i learned so much more than i even thought about like i and like i had inter- i had done written interviews with some colorists in the past but just being able to talk to him and then play off of what he was saying i really learned a lot about like the mindset and i, I can't wait to share that with you guys I'm, i'll be oh, post- yeah. i'll be posting it well I'll, it'll go on before this this goes on. Yeah, but coloring is um in, in this book is is phenomenal and, and I and I loved the opening scene of them in the club and they're all dancing. And that that to me was like it, it sets you up to where you're just like, this is gonna be a fun ride. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the energy in 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 Sanford's art, the coloring and and, and Renzi, the purples, the you know, the dark tones yeah. and stuff yeah. that he uses. The bright it's, greens, the bright greens and the bright oranges, dude. I yeah. love that. And the uh, night, the night scene, the night sky that he does is just fuck, man. Like you yeah. feel like you're chilling on the streets at night in New York. You know what but I mean? Like that's what, what I really, like. sorry, what I really like is um, how they use like he uses uh, color palettes. So like every time you turn the pages, it, it can switch from like purplish tones to like bright uh, orange tones. It's like every pages is a new color palette a different color palette and that's yeah. it's always a surprise which i really love okay i have a question so you know how and in, in every every chapter or so this is well in, in the the individualized issues like there's uh there's always a fa- there's always that family portrait yeah <laughs> who the hell is the guy in the middle with the mask on um, they haven't explained that right i don't think so I, yeah, don't, because, I don't. I like, don't think he's... so, because okay, I, I know so that's. I'm... I know that's Blink's parents in there. Th- those are the ones that got trapped in that other zone the, or whatever. Barzak. That other Barzak. realm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know that we've even learned who that person is. Now that you mention it, I kind of want to know. Right. Uh, you know the one. The, the, you know. You know what picture I'm talking about, right? The one. The one that's in sepia. It's but, like yeah, in the background like, uh, where where Ma Edda's in the in the foreground. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Ma Edda. Shout out to Ma Edda. I know she's fucking. I just love every character, dude. I don't. I don't yeah. think there was one even, character I didn't like. Even the Sylvester, I, I liked. Yeah, you know what and, I mean. Uh, like, Miss, uh, what, what's what's the other lady? Nightsdale, Miss Nightsdale. Yes, she's cool too. It's, it's nope. crazy, and and I really I really like the fact that like you know, you know how the 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 it was white people that turned into Jinu, and then it's black people that turn into the Izondo, right? The like it's it's crazy how it's it's fueled by these two like, by by two such opposing things. It's like the hate, which which like led to the sorrow of black people, is what's turning black people into these demons too. Like it's it's like it's such a crazy chain reaction, you know. You know it's 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 absolutely crazy. And then the thing and the thing is, it's like the sorrow the sorrow from which like the other the, you know that they feel it's like it's like literally justified. Like how do you? How do you take away that sorrow and how do you take away that pain? And then like, it's crazy, dude. It's such a, it's, it's such an interesting concept to deal with. Like, yeah. You know, and then like, even amongst their own people, like, yeah. It, 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 in the beginning, you saw like the, the two cops, there's a black cop and a white cop and he calls them, oh, that's just their mumbo jumbo. Like he doesn't even like believe in them. 
Yeah. You know, and he's like, how could you not believe, like, they're your people? They're your people. You know? And I'm like, yeah, like, what? <laughs> and I love how they, they take that, or <laughs> how that little boy that, that was there at the KKK group, like, Ford, like, brings him along, and now he's, like, he's kind of like their servant or helper. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they didn't even, like, turn him away, even though he yeah. was part of that hateful group. You know, like, they just don't turn anyone away. Yeah. And, you know, even Ford was like, you haven't killed anybody yet, so you're still pure. And and then just the way like you know I, I, like how he progresses too is really cool because he goes from like he goes he okay because like I feel like in the South like if you were kind of new like you know back then if you were like, this is kind of like kind of like a gang mentality right I feel like back then like if you were lost and you were kind of neutral about the whole race thing like you know you you really that it really didn't trigger you the way it did like some of some of the KKK like, you you kind of just went went along with the group right yeah. you were doing that because because well, your friends were doing it but even though in your heart of hearts like you you didn't believe any of the things that they were saying it was kind of like it's kind of like peer pressure and then but for that's him to like that's crazy dude i don't think anybody like i just like maybe it's because like i'm not easily peer pressured yeah or i i, I don't think i can be peer pressured like everything yeah. i've done all the bad shit you know all the dumb shit i've done like I knew what the fuck I was doing. I don't. I don't put any blame on anyone. I'm not like, oh well, if it wasn't for them, like I never would have done it. Mm -hmm. I just don't see how somebody, especially something so hateful mm -hmm. and so fucking like violent, how anybody, if they don't believe that, how they could allow themselves to be peer pressured into that. And I know I'm not saying that it didn't happen, but how? How do you? How do you let yourself? How are you that weak willed? I the guess the thing is, I think it's. We we have to like go back in time and think about, for example, back in time slavery was a normal thing, but like yeah. it's 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 wrong, you know. Like today you realize that it it's incredibly wrong, but back in the days, even if you wanted to like even if you didn't want it, didn't want to be like part of the slavery, you you still were because that was how society was, you know. So, yes, there's peer pressure, but there's also, like, the normal normalization of, like, wrong things in society, which brings us back to now, where we are actually fighting what, like, police brutality and racism and stuff like that, that was normal. Well, it, it still kind of is for some people, but it was normal, you know, for, like, mm -hmm. cops to kill more black people or, you know, it was normal. It was normalized for, for police brutality. Today, we're like, okay, we need to stop this, but just five years ago it was still okay like it's normal that this is how things are and this is how we have to accept it them you know i think there's peer pressure but there's also like the mentality of the back in the days it's kind of like it's wrong you know it's wrong but this is how things are and this is how things are gonna stay and that's why we have to fight this state of mind that things needs to change all the time you know yeah yeah no, I I I one hundred percent one hundred percent agree with that. And once again, like I'm still tripping out over the fact that it was set in 1921 and we're in 2020. And it's like literally a hundred years ago. Like, well, it's it, not it, that long. <laughs> yeah, it's really not that long ago. Like, it's it's you know, freaking the whole civil rights movement in the 60s was literally just in the 60s. That was like 60 years ago. Like, that's not that's like that's people's grandparents are still alive that remember that. My wife's um, grandparents, they're in their 90s. They remember, like, the Spanish flu. They remember, like... That's crazy. You know, they but remember all... It's all, not just all. that. Just think about women's rights. Yeah, At exactly. At some point, we didn't, I didn't... I couldn't even vote, you know? Like, That's, yeah. just, cra that's just it's, crazy. It's, it's, it's not that long ago. I mean, yeah. it's maybe, like, three, four generations. Not even. So, yeah, no, not even. Like, like two generations. Yeah, like, two <laughs> generations. Like, yeah. there's people, like like I said, there's people's grandparents who are still alive for a lot of this stuff, especially, like, the, the crazy stuff that was happening in America. Like, when they put, like, all the Japanese people in internment camps. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or, 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 like, or, or the desegregation of high schools. Like, but it's not, not that long ago. Like, people are driven. I know. I was <laughs> reading that, uh, I don't know if you guys saw on my Instagram, that picture of that book, King, that yeah. I shared. I learned about that, about Hoche Anderson and his work from the Cartoonist Kayfabe mm -hmm. uh, YouTube channel. And I was like, fuck, I got I to gotta check this dude's work out. Like, his interview was just phenomenal. And that book was so fucking powerful, the imagery in it. Like, it's, it's mixed media. A lot of the fucking shit that they were talking about, it was just crazy, dude. It was crazy how similar some of the topics, like, 
it literally could have they could have put slapped the date 2020 on it on some of the conversations and it would have been the same fucking shit fuck crazy see that's that that just goes to show you we're not really that far along you know what i mean we're especially not. with this stuff and especially especially with like just like regional mentality of like people are literally having a fucking conniption over the Confederate flag being taken down off of state flags. Like, what do you mean? Like that shit is fucking. I don't like, even understand I, like, why that's a topic. Take the fucking yeah. flag down. Yeah. It mm-hmm. shouldn't fucking be up. You know what I mean? Like that's just a symbol of hate. I don't understand yeah. why anybody could even argue that. I don't understand why that wasn't taken down years ago. You know, like, hello, you fucking lost motherfuckers. You <laughs> lost the fucking war. And yet you're, you want to throw that up there still? Like you yeah. lost. Yeah, and and what's crazy about it is, okay, for the five years that the Confederacy existed, they were literally against the U.S. Constitution. Like, they are enemies of the freaking country. How are you even freaking supporting that and calling calling yourself American? Yeah, I don't know. It's crazy, you know? I mean, it seems like I've been talking about this for weeks, about, you know, the whether it's with you, Dylan, and now Jen's a part of this too, Mario, everybody I've been talking to, all the fucking creators that I've interviewed i talk about it at some point or another i'm either talking about fucking diversity or racism but i think that's what's great about comics is that comics are so political you know like it's wrong to say that comics are not political and it shouldn't be mixed because comics are a great medium to talk about politics and talk about what needs to change and talk about how can we expect the future to be if we continue this this way or how things are going to be if we change this and this and this. It's a great medium to communicate that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I'm posting a video today, actually. Um, Mario and I kind of talk about, like, diversity and representation in comics and how great, like, we have books like Bitter Root, right? We have books mm-hmm. like Pretty Deadly by yeah. Kelly Sue DeConnick and Emma Rios. You know, like, we have these, but we're still not there, you know? Yeah. And I, I won't go too far into it, but, you know, like, I just... I can't get these topics out of my mind. And like I maybe the people watching or listening to to the stuff on Comic Lounge lately, that maybe they're getting sick of it, but like I'm just gonna keep fucking drilling it in because yeah. it's it's something that bothers me. And you know, again, I'll say it as a white guy, maybe I don't have to deal with some of this stuff, you know, like that other people do. But I, I have dealt with somewhat similar being Jewish, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. Yeah, no, you know. hate is hate, dude. Like, don't matter. Like, hate is hate. And the thing is, it's 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 been like this for hundreds of years. Like, like, and like, if you really want to date it back, like, there's always been there's always been some people that it's oppressed. So, like, the fact that we're still talking about it today means there's something there's something inherently within society needs to change. Yeah. Oh yeah, like, of course. You know what I mean? Inherently within society, like the, the way the way we look at things, the way we address things, and the way we talk about things. I'll I'll be the first to tell you, like amongst uh, amongst my friend group, like we make a lot of racist jokes towards each other, and I'm like, you know, that's 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 kind of a thing of the past now because it's it's not right anymore. Because, if it's in like, a kitchen, it's okay. Yeah, exactly. We're just a bunch of land pirates at, at that point. But like <laughs> with you know, but with with our with our group of friends, like you know. We're a super diverse group. I mean, Ryan, in high school, we were a super di- diverse group of kids in, in all those classes. Oh, you know, I, like, yeah, we, we had we had we had cholos. It, it was crazy. It was just a, a different mix of people. But like at the at the end of the day, no one ever really like really was bothered by it. It was just a normal thing. So, no, I, so I felt more at place in that continuation school than I did in regular high school. Yeah, you know what I mean. It just felt like not to say I was an outcast or anything, but it just felt like. I don't know. I just felt more a place in that kind of group. You know what I mean? There, yeah. there was no, there was no fucking animosity between people. Everybody no, no was clicks. just there. Yeah, it was fucking dope. Yeah, it was great. I loved it. I was saying like you know, it's just, it's, it's it's a societal change. The fact oh, that yeah, people, the, yeah, it's, the, the fact that people are triggered, like certain people, certain groups of people are triggered when people say Black Lives Matter. Is it's it, it, that 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 should tell you right there that 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 it's something within you, bro. Like. People can say, you know, save the whales, but we're not tell, tell, telling all the other friggin' sea life to go fuck off. We're just saying, yo, the, the whales need help right now. Dude, that's a great fucking example. <laughs> right? yeah, that's a I great love that. Example. Right? Like, save yeah. the whales. But, you know, like, oh, trout lives matter too. Like, what? No. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, no, like, like, we get it. It's, it's fine. But, like, right now, the whales are endangered. <laughs> like... I love how you said that it's a societal change because I cannot speak 
like to what's happening in America, but I can speak to what's happening in Canada. And it's crazy because people are saying, oh, Canada, you know, it's like the great land. It's perfect, whatever, whatever. It's so peaceful. But like we have racism in Canada. It's not people are looking at the U.S. and saying U.S. are so crazy. They're like a bunch of idiots and stuff like that. But I'm, I mean, we like, are a bunch of idiots. Don't think yeah, yeah. But not. like Canada, too, you know, it's just that I feel like we are not realizing it that there is currently racism there is currently um misogy- misogyny i don't know how to say that misogyny uh, misogyny thank you um and yeah so but for me like as long as we as canadian don't realize that we still we have to work as much as you our cousins or neighbors have to work changes are not going to happen you know like Because we are still in delusion saying like, oh, it's only in the US. It's not only in the US. It's everywhere, you know? Yeah. And that's that's just a message for my fellow Canadians, you know, like we have to change. We're don't look don't look at the US saying like, oh, they're crazy or it's fucked up up there. But like it's fucked up here too. Just realize it. Look look at your right, look at your left, you know? Yeah. Every day I want to punch someone in the face. So it's not <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to, I'd love to see you punch someone in the face. <laughs> I was I was having a conversation with uh, someone, and I was like, I feel like everyone, including girls, needs to get punched in the face at least once. Everyone that way they can realize like, yo, you say something stupid, you'll get checked for it. Just oh, realize wow. that. But yeah, but yeah, I mean, I think comics like this, comics like uh, Bitter Root, comics like Excellence, comics like shit, the X Men, like you know, it's just baffling to me. Like I like like I told you last week, Ryan. Like I'm a comment whore. Like, I will read the shit out of comments, and it's just appalling, some of these comments about certain things and certain topics. Like, it's like, dude, like, why is your thinking so backwards? Like, like you know, the whole po- police brutality thing, like, oh, oh like, freaking, there were more white people killed by cops than black people. Then you agree that cops are killing people, <laughs> right? Like, you agree, and, and, you, and you're not mad about this? Look, like, yeah. like, Look, how are you not mad about this? It, it, it's, it, well, I don't understand why people even have this, this art, why they bring these fucking numbers up. It doesn't fucking matter. The problem is, is there is something, it's not just that it's racism and, and, uh, what's that word? When you fucking see somebody and you're, ju- and you immediately Prejudice. judge. No, Prejudice. no, uh, not stereotype. Fuck, man, I can't think of the word. I, I usually know. Anyways. It's not just the fact that there's racism in the police department. It's that there's corruption in the police department. The fucking brutality. I've experienced them fucking just like unnecessarily being, you know, rough or whatever. I've been slammed up against the wall. I was like, dude, I don't fucking. I even said something. I was like, dude, I don't even have anything in my hands. And they fucking threw me up against the wall. You know what I mean? I was like, Mm -hmm. I got nothing on me. There's no weapon. What are you doing? You know, like they don't give a shit. Or they. so uh, I'm going to share. So I'm going to share with you a little story about my experience with the Beverly Hills Police Department. <laughs> All Alex right, Foley? So, huh? Alex Foley? Yeah, and see, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. Unfortunately, it wasn't. I wish it was a cop from Detroit. <laughs> then maybe, I mean, then maybe it would have been a little easier. At least it would have been funny. But this shit wasn't <laughs> funny at all. <laughs> so. All right, so a buddy of mine, he, uh, his family had a house in Beverly Hills, and we were leaving it. Right? It was myself. The driver was black. Our buddy, he's Israeli and Taiwanese. So he looks Asian-ish. And mm-hmm. then me, I look Hispanic. And then another friend of mine who was a lighter shade of black. But uh, all, uh, all in all, not a single white person in the car. We were in this beat up little Honda Accord. Like, you know, the old boxy ones, like from the 80s. One of those. Yeah. And we were driving along, mind our own business. We literally had just left my homie's house who, like, lived, like, on one, one of those, whose parents owned one of those big-ass freaking Beverly Hills mansions that had a basement. I've never seen a house in California that had a basement. But anyway, we were driving along, and then we hit a right on the Santa Monica Boulevard. And then immediately when we hit that right, we didn't even see the cops. The cops just pulled us over. And then they were like, oh, you guys fit the description of what? A string of... A home invasions so we're gonna search your car we're gonna put you guys in handcuffs and they literally freaking it was santa monica boulevard during rush hour traffic they freaking slammed us 
uh, right onto the freaking ground. We're all laying down. Like, we didn't even have to be laying down. You could have just had us sitting up, bro. They all, and then they were, they were freaking throwing all, of, all the shit we had in the car out. There was a DVD in there. From, it was called Let's Go to Prison. It was one of those, like, um, during the whole Judd Apatow era of comedies that, like, a bunch of, like, you know, just random like comedies were coming out and they said let's go to prison and the cop was literally like oh so you guys looking at like uh, watching movies uh, to, uh, watching movies to see how your future is gonna go huh and i'm like what <laughs> what oh, damn, what did yeah. you just fucking say like so you automatically assume that we are trying to go to prison when we are literally just trying to go to freaking grab a burger nice right yeah. and then after they were done and didn't find anything, they ran our num- they ran our names, no warrants, nothing like that. They did all that, and they just literally took the handcuffs off while and then and then drove off. And they said, "Don't get up until we drive off." <sighs> and all our shit was just on the sidewalk, like we were stuck. We 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 were we were causing traffic because Santa Monica Boulevard, right where we got pulled up, uh, pulled over. You know, it was a two lane thing, and there was construction going on, so it was literally just down to one lane, and we were basically essentially blocking that one lane so it was freaking it was just absolutely horrible dude like like there in in, uh, in no capacity should people be pulled over and treated like that just because we look like what you say we look like <sighs> it's bullshit dude like i don't know it's just wrong yeah like, like like dude and keep in mind we were just like still fresh we were still fresh 20s in, uh, at that time so it's not like it's not like you know we were grown-ass men looking all super suspicious, riding around with a bunch of stolen crap in the back of our trunk. But we were just literally just trying to go get a burger. But I'll tell you what, though, that burger was a bomb as hell. It was the most <laughs> rewarding burger ever. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. But yeah, like, it's just, it's just dumb. I mean, these little subtle changes that, Amer- that like all these companies are making are really doing nothing for fucking, what do you call it, for fucking the, the movement at all? Like, we're trying to get systemic change. We're not trying to get Aunt Jemima taken off of the a fucking cereal, uh, a syrup bottle. You know what I mean? They're fighting like, the wrong fucking battles. That's, that's yeah, the problem. It's pandering. Yeah. It's, it's, it's pandering. It's literally yeah. just pandering. I'm, I'm, I'm a little peeved that, like, they took some episodes of the Golden Girls off of Hulu because they said, oh, it's offensive. I'm like, nobody cares about the Golden Girls. I mean, I care about the Golden Girls, but not like that. They're doing this just to, you know, to feel good, like, Oh, I'm doing something, but it's 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 doing nothing. You're just doing yeah. this to like sh- like look like you're doing something good. I'm not saying it's bad. It's just like it's not genuine. You know, it doesn't feel authentic. It feels like you're just following like a trend or something. Yeah, this is exhausting. <laughs> yeah, let's 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 get. Uh, I mean, not to say that this isn't an important subject. I mean, I think it's clear all of us agree that there needs to be fucking a change. I I think. Person on a personal level, I think, or a personal opinion, I feel like something is going to change. Uh, yeah. Maybe it's wishful thinking, but it feels like this is a little bit different than what we've seen before, and it's because yeah. people have the time because of like you know because of the pandemic, they got the time to find some you know to fight. Yeah, they they, they don't they're not all working forty plus hours a week, and so they're, they're fucking taking themselves. to the streets, dude. They're fucking like, well, no, we got to do this shit now. I mean, I don't know if you watched the Dennis Cowan interview I posted yesterday, but he, the same thing, dude. He's fucking badass. He fucking went to a couple protests. You know what I mean? Like, that's dope (laughs) as fuck. It it made me like him even more. I mean, I already really love Dennis Cowan, you know? But, yeah. Yeah, Things need to change. I feel like we're going to see some sort of a change. I don't know how drastic the change will be, but it does feel like something's going to be different. It's going to be different because of COVID, and it's going to be different because of Black Lives Matter because mm-hmm. this isn't going – it's not just going to be swept under the rug again, these these people. And, and now you're seeing more white people get, get behind this movement, whereas the last time we didn't Shout see that. Shout out to the allies, dude. Those allies are down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the freaking allies of Black Lives Matter, they're so down. Dude. Like I just – I mean Rome wasn't built in a day. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, obviously we, we, we are, we are in, in, in the moments of catalyst of catalysts. There is numerous things happening that are leading to a greater change. But Mm -hmm. right now, like all this pandering is, is it's all it's doing. It's giving the people who already like had, 
had their freaking feelings hurt by the whole Black Lives Matter thing. It's just giving them fuel. Like, oh, look, they're taking Aunt Jemima off. Like, what, are they, what else are they going to do? They're going to take off Uncle Ben? Because that's they racist, are. too. Are they, they are? are? Yeah. Fuck. Bye-bye, Uncle Ben. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, I love Uncle Ben. Yeah. But, like, but you know what I mean? Like, this, the, 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 these things. I mean, changing the Confederate flag, that's one thing. That is, like, that's, like, you know, you know, in Germany, if you have any type of Nazi freaking um, uh, memorabilia, like, that's instant jail time without even, without, like, e with no question. You yeah, know what I mean? Should be. But, like, you know, but, you know, like, and, and, you know, people are getting mad that they're taking statues down. It's like, there's no statue of fucking Hitler in Germany. Like, fuck out of here. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Like, you, the, you know what I mean? People like, fighting the removal of statues is, like, I just don't get it. Like, come on, you don't want a rapist or, a sla like, a slave owner or whatever as a statue it's it's wrong you know it's just like yeah. anyway it's the statue the guy is dead for since like three thousand years like stop it yeah. <laughs> if i i think i think the, i think the answer to appease all parties in the statue thing is you get all those statues you get them you, you gather them all up you put them in a museum and yeah. you freaking explain why they were taken down why they're offensive like that's you know what a I great mean? idea like that's I, that's I think I, I think that's a that's a reasonable solution if you don't want to erase history because the thing is it's like the whole the whole erasure of history thing I think that 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 is a that that that's a stupid excuse you know you know history history is history like the fact that we know more about Robert E Lee than we do about the freaking Tulsa riots should speak waves as to what history is remembered and what history isn't you know what I mean right like yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, how can five years of the Confederacy exist and we know all about it, but freaking we, like, I, like, 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 you know, I just learned about the Tulsa riots because I watched Watchmen. How is that possible? How was I never taught that after Martin Luther King was assassinated, there was six weeks of riots? I didn't know that. Like, yeah. But I, like you said, like, history is history, but we need to learn from history in order to change things. And for me, if we still have like statues or examples of people who did wrong things in history, how can we expect things to change if we're still saying this was okay? You know what I mean? Yeah. In order to change, we need to, we need to learn the true history. We need to learn that this guy did this thing good, but he did all these things wrong, you know? Yeah. Yeah, like you know, like you know, this person did great things, but he also did some bad things. Exactly. Like you know, that, that and that's and that's human nature. Like we can't we can't hold people up on a pedestal and think think them as these immaculate examples of whatever you know, immaculate examples yeah. of science, immaculate examples of just like running a government. Like because you know, like everybody has their dirt. Everyone, you know, like I have mine, Ryan has yours, Jen, I'm sorry, you have yours. Like we, we all did some fucked up stuff. And the thing is, it's like, if I ever go down in history as being famous, like I want to make sure that everybody knows that I did some fucking fucked up shit too. I constantly share the shit I did. I don't give a yeah. fuck. I mean, that's, yeah, you know, see? it is what yeah. it is. You know, that's who a, I am. That's what fucking, made me who I am. I was a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. So, uh, you were a fucking idiot. I think I was a little worse than you, bro. But yeah, yeah, you guys came here for comics today and you left with politics. So hope yeah. you guys have enjoyed all that. Okay. But it, uh, it's, it's linked. As I said, there's no yeah. comics without politics. So That's true. That's true. Yeah. I agree. Because we didn't really get to ask Jen what she's been reading lately. Oh, yeah. And what have you been uh, reading or what are you going to – are you picking anything up this week? I am not. Um, I um, I stopped picking up like uh, singles and stuff like that uh, because I want to focus more on trades for multiple reasons. But right now, uh, yesterday I just finished uh, Essex County from uh, Jeff Lemire, Ooh. which was great. I love that book. It's amazing. Yeah, it's it's great. I just finished it. I'm gonna write up a review soon, but it, it was really great. And my next on my list, uh, I need to finish Excellence for uh, Volume One. Yes, you do. Yeah, yeah, you do. I'm like two chapters in, and I really, really, really love it. I know. I love that fucking book. I we love that book. love that book. I will scream to the high heavens. I, I, I will openly admit that I'm a Carrie Randolph stan. Like, I stan Carrie Randolph so hard. I don't even care. I know. So do I. I think I constantly <laughs> fucking talk about it at work, too. <laughs> That's I great. spent so much time. And then, like, I tried to recommend it to somebody. We, we, we sold out at the shop because yeah. I'm constantly telling people to fucking buy it. Yeah. Do you get do you get any people coming back to you saying, "Oh man, I love that book"? 
Not really, because I feel like they're not regulars. Uh, Some of okay. the people that'll walk in and I recommend it to. The people yeah. that, that get on their sub list, though, like, we'll talk about it constantly, you know? Oh, yeah, uh, that's what I'm talking about. But, you know, because some of the customers, like, they'll they'll check out my interviews and shit. And That's one awesome. Of, one of them, uh, he actually commented on the Kari Randolph one. And mm. we, we talk about it constantly. Because we both love Ninja Turtles. And, and so, like, we always talk about that. But, like, we started talking about excellence, like, the last time he came in. Uh, Jen, I have a recommendation for you. I, I want to say before I forget, I think you need to check out Love and Rockets. Oh, okay, I don't know that one. Dylan, you too, actually. One of the most influential series in comics history. Like, they have influenced so many. Jaime Hernandez, it's Los Bros Hernandez, Jaime Hernandez, and Gilbert Hernandez, Mario Hernandez. Los uh, Bros Hernandez. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> so, you have, to, you have to check it out, both of you. They each have their own stories. Um, gotcha. Jaime does like the Locus stories, and then Gilbert does the Palomar stories. I personally would start with Jaime's work, and because I wanted, I want to be able to talk to you guys about it. And <laughs> right now, the only person I can talk to is my brother, who finally, after years of knowing about it, he got me to finally read it, and I've pretty much read all of it now. Oh um, yeah, I'll give, but, it, I'll give, I'll give it a look. I, and I know you like color, Jen, but this isn't black and white. It's okay. I love black and white too, you know. <laughs> I know, I, I know, but this I, is I actually this is I actually amazing. suggested Jen read the wretch and that's all in black and white, so. <laughs> yeah, but read read Love and Rockets because I, I I might be having an interview coming up, so I want you guys nice. to Nice. Perfect. Uh, I just yeah. added it to my wish list. All right, cool. Um oh, are you if you're on a computer, get uh The Girl from Hoppers. The Girl from Hoppers? The Girl from Hoppers is Jaime's second trade. And the only reason I say to start with that is because I think if you get the first one, which is Maggie the Mechanic, you guys may not want to pick up the next volume. Just because it's different than what the series becomes. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you can go back and read Maggie the Mechanic afterwards and you'll appreciate it more, I think. But yeah, The Girl from Hoppers, dude, it's some of the best comic books I've ever read in my life. It changed my uh, outlook on what comics can and should be. It's just, oh, hell yeah. it's just amazing, dude. And the women characters that he writes are just, they're perfect, dude. Like, they're great. Maggie and Hopi forever, dude. You'll know what I That's, mean when you guys read it. Man, like, it, it, writing women, like, I, I feel like would be such a challenge. Like, and some, uh, some, some writers just write excellent women. It's so crazy. <laughs> uh, he draws excellent women. He fucking <laughs> writes excellent women. I mean, he, like, they're not, like, he doesn't draw them all, like, you know, like or like mid nineties, late nineties. You know, like J. Scott I, I, Campbell. I yeah, you know, like <laughs> he, they're not. They, they look real. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, in, in his influences. I, I won't get too much into it, but his influences. Like, I'll talk to you guys about it after you guys read it, and then you'll completely see the the influences. I mean, he inf he was a huge influence on Brubaker. Oh hell yeah! Like huge influence. Brubaker talks about it in every fucking interview you will ever read or watch. He talks about Love and Rockets being one of the major influences on him becoming a cartoonist. Because he used to draw, too, when he first started doing comics. I just, I just had to say it, because I, I gotta spread the love. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, That's what we're here for. That's what the Comic Lounge is here for. Spread the love, dude. Spread yeah. the love. So, Dylan, I know, I mean, I think you and I are both excited for the same books this week, right? Bitterroot, Excellence. Yeah, I need Bitterroot, to catch up Excellence, on Philadelphia. Philadelphia. I need to catch up on it. Oh, it's dude. dude, it's okay. First off, Jason Sean Alexander, uh, like this is fucking transcendent work here, dude. It is so freaking amazing. Like it's crazy to me that this fool, like he he transfers so well, like from like a canvas medium to yeah. a digital medium. He it, it's absolutely seamless. I'm actually excited for uh, what do you call deceased? Dead Planet comes out next week too. I'm kind of excited. I don't know. I love Tom Taylor, but I just, I'm really having a hard time with DC. Yeah. You know? A lot of people are. DC's, <laughs> DC's a little rough right now. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see if Lunar can get their books out on time. We don't even know if, uh, if the books will be released. Oh, this Lunar? is the first week that Lunar takes over? Completely. Yeah. Oh, is that why they had the, the hiatus week this week? Right. Yeah. They were doing that to catch up because, you know, to, allow shops to start their accounts, get their orders in, 
And yeah, just to kind of like catch everything up. And then gotcha. Marvel was on an off week because they're on an every other week schedule right now where they're releasing books. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it just kind of coincided. Yeah. I don't think they did it on purpose, but like DC and Marvel both didn't come out last week. That was yeah. the easiest fucking pull I've I've done since I've worked at the comic book shop, except for New Year's Day. That was like a l- small amount of books too. But I mean, we'll see. Like I mean, they, this whole lunar, this whole DC going with new with a new uh, printing company is a, a distributor, a whole new distributor is going to be uh, pretty interesting. We'll see how it goes. I mean, I I've already cut back most of my fucking my DC stuff and Marvel. I think most of my pulls is, is indie now. Good. Good. Great. <laughs> <laughs> there she I, is. <laughs> and I, I'm about to, I mean, I'm about to drop another DC book because Lois Lane is is over on um, Wednesday. That's the last issue. So that'll be another book off another DC book off my list. I think once Joshua Williamson is off Flash, I'll probably take a break from Flash. Jimmy Olsen has one issue left. And Wait, then I'm so you're, not, to... you're not excited about Joker War? <laughs> no, no, no. Not at all. That's such a visceral no. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't, dude. I just, I, I don't find any of it appealing. I just I, don't. I read, None I read of it. One of, I read one of the taglines for it, and it's literally, said, it's literally like the, what, the freaking weakest tagline I've ever read. It's like, Batman versus Joker. This time it's war. Yeah, you see, it's that kind of shit. It's that kind of shit that has Jen not reading DC comics. Oh yeah, Yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's that kind of bullshit. It's like, dude, stop. It's just fucking stop already. I, you know, like they're 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 fucking feeding the speculation market, dude, right now. Yeah, garbage ass books. You know what? I think I'll be down to like one DC book pretty soon because Lois Lane ends. Jimmy Olsen has one issue. The question has one issue. And then what? I have, and then after that, it's Flash and, and Metal, and I, I could probably take it or leave it with Metal at, at this point. I could probably just w- read the trade. I don't know. I, I'll, I mean, I'll probably get it. You don't want to love- read more about anorexic Swamp Thing? <laughs> <laughs> Dylan, you just, you're like, you're like me. You're, you're doing the same thing to me that I do to Nick. Where I, you're just like. You're poking the bear, dude. You know? I love it. It's so yeah. fun. I haven't I, I haven't mentioned Valiant once this podcast though, so Fuck we're, Valiant. we're on a roll right now. Fuck <laughs> Valiant. All right, but that's a, yeah. Have you picked out a book for next week? No, I haven't. But like, I mean, I I definitely want to go image. Like, you know what I haven't read that I've been meaning to? Mm. Uh, Gideon Falls. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. I wasn't like, a fan, but I, I, it's like everybody loves it. I just wasn't a fan personally. But if you pick, if you, uh, if you do pick it and read it, let me know because I want to exchange about that. Oh yeah, for sure. Like I, I just, I don't even know what it's about. Like, <laughs> like um, I haven't read anything about it. Like you know, be, like, you know, I, I think that that's the thing with like comics, like uh, with certain comics. Like, especially with indie titles. Like, Bitter Root, I didn't know what that was about until I started reading it. I try not to read, like, synopses about comics until, like, you know, that way I just go in completely blind and just completely surprised. Like, if the writer is good and I know the writer's work, I'll just definitely jump into it. Like, like you know, that's kind of that's like my thing with stuff. Like, that's why when, like, Ryan, when Ryan suggests stuff to me, like, I, I, I try not to read like um synopsis of it i just want to go in surprised yeah. blind and see see where it takes me you know what I mean? you don't need to because you know your boy is gonna fucking always recommend good shit <laughs> this, I is, I, this is I also true bad. this is also true we've known each other so long and we've spent so many hours a lot of that in school like that's all we were doing is just yeah. talking comics so like you, i know you are my... the reason you you are kind of the reason why i love gail simone you're like welcome that. No, yeah, no, I freaking love Gail Simone. Like, Gail, Gail Simone is great. Like, when uh, she tweeted the other day, uh, she yesterday, has the, when... She has the best fucking Twitter feed. Dude, I she's the love... best. I love Gail Simone. She slays. is, like, the she ultimate slays on Twitter, dude. troll trap, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it's great. And, uh, wait, what do you call it? She tweeted yesterday that she was, uh, that after she found out about Alien and Predator getting uh, bought by Marvel, she was like, oh, I want in. I'm like, hell yeah, give it to her. Yeah, I love Gail. But yeah, like no, the first Gail Simone book that you introduced me to was Agent X. So good, so fucking good. 
that was like one of the best freaking that's some of the best freaking writing for if a non Deadpool. If we, if we could def- if we could define our our friendship like you know like in different categories, the comic that our friendship would represent is Agent X. Yeah, absolutely. I, I recommend Agent X to everyone. Everyone should yes. read Agent X. And the thing is, it's like it's not one of those things where you got to read a backstory. They pretty much cover everything that goes on throughout the th- throughout the run, and uh, it's it's great. I think it's absolutely hilarious. And freaking Alvin Lee, freaking like if that name is unfamiliar to you, go play a Street Fighter game because freaking Alvin Lee is all over Street Fighter. <laughs> like, yeah. Or, 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 or Udon. Just go check out the Udon freaking page and freaking you can see all the Alvin Lee influences that uh, current Udon artists are like, you know, really freaking flying with. But uh, yeah, but yeah, Gail Simone, Gail Simone's great and freaking, yeah, uh, Agent X is what started it. <laughs> let's, let's do something not image though next week. Oh, you want to do something do not image? image? Well, I, okay. let's like rotate so that we're not just doing, I don't, you know, one publisher. Okay. I yeah, challenge yeah. you challenge you to pick something like Boom Studios or IDW, something different. Oh, yeah, no, I mean IDW titles like the, the my problem my issue with IDW titles is they own like a lot of like franchise they they publish a lot of franchise um comics. And yeah. I don't know how I feel about them. You know, like I mean the I, I mean I love Kanto. Kanto you know, the, tur- is, you know, the turtles on uh, me? I love the turtles. the turtles, but like I'm not gonna read Transformers. <laughs> like, you know, like I mean, we could always do Ninja Turtles. We could always do Ninja Turtles. Um, I don't even know where to start. I don't even know where the turtles are at right now. Like that's how freaking disconnected I am from the current turtles. Yeah. I mean, or we could do Dark Horse. Mm. Or <laughs> what? I don't know. No, no, it's just Dark Horse. Dark Horse. Dark Horse is one of those indie publishers too that I'm just like. Some of them are just fucking spectacular, and other of them is just like what. I mean, they got fucking Hellboy. I mean, what do you mean? Like yeah, I said, and, uh, spectacular. Black oh, Black Hammer. Oh, Black, Hammer, Black Hammer, dude. Let's do Black Hammer. I haven't read Black Hammer yet, and I've been meaning to. You haven't read it? No. We're fucking doing. You, you have. Great. That's your pick. That's your pick for next week. That's my Black pick. Hammer. That's my pick for next week. Black I Hammer. I fucking Black love that series. It's amazing. All right. Is there like a volume one I gotta get into? Because I know there's like multiple iterations of Black Hammer. There's four volumes of the linear story, and then there's some spinoffs. Read. Just read book one. Yeah. Okay. You'll want to. You should probably take book home, or book two, with you too, because you'll want to read it right after. Okay, I'll do that. But I'll we'll go that. over book one. Yeah, we'll do book one. So, and like I said, Black Hammer is another one of those things I did. I haven't read the freaking synopsis for, so this is gonna be a freaking adventure. Oh, You're gonna love it. I trust both of your recommendations because both of you have rec- recommended some excellent book books. Like you know, if I if if it wasn't for Jen, I wouldn't have never read Monstrous, and I freaking love that shit. Right? right? It's the greatest story ever, <laughs> dude. It's it like, but the thing is, with Monstrous though, I can't do individual issues. Like, no, there's no, just can't. each each issue is just so heavy, and it's just it's just so far in between to get like new issues that. I om- it almost loses this momentum for me. So, like, I have to get the trades. So, yeah, you know what I mean? It's one of those things that I have to get the trades for. That, is, that comic is just fucking heavy. I got rid of my trades. I had the first four, and yeah. I was just like, you know what? I'll just fucking wait for the hardcovers. I- I'm just going to wait till it's done and yeah. then get the hardcovers for all of it. Because I Image puts out great hardcovers, in my opinion. Yeah, they do. I love, yeah. and they're reasonably priced. They're not super expensive. But yeah, I agree. The, the art for me, the art is the best part of that book. The yeah, art is yeah, fucking it's so phenomenal. unique. It's yeah. so different. Yeah, it's like it's like it's like a it's like anime steampunk in yeah. sepia. Yeah, yeah. perfect <laughs> description. Yeah, yeah, it's like anime steampunk in sepia. It's great. It's freaking fantastic. And I swear to God, if something happens to Kippa, I'm gonna fucking riot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Jen, when do you want to come back and uh, join us again? Anytime. I love you guys. All right. Oh, we love you too, Jen. <laughs> well, let's definitely do this again, dude. This is fun having Yeah, Jen. this is fun. I love I love having Jen around. It's yeah, I mean. love being here too. It's so fun. <laughs> you guys are my only comic friends, you know, like in real life, like here, like in Montreal, I know nobody. Like oh. there's no one around me reading comics. It's like horrible. <laughs> uh, that's how I felt my entire youth. And then I met Dylan. Yeah, <laughs> and then I met Dylan, and I was like, "Oh my God, my peoples!" Yeah, know? no, dude. Like my current life, right? Okay, so at work, everyone knows I'm a big ass nerd. So what they'll do, they'll just ask me certain questions. But then I feel like 
I, I pull them into like, you know, my whole nerd vortex and give them information that they don't need to know. Like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, thing. Dylan, like, oh, Dylan, what's uh, like, uh, what do you call, what do you think about friggin' Marvel, uh, like, you know, the whole Marvel Disney thing? Oh, I think it's fucking trash. And then I just start going to friggin' the analytics of it. And they're like, oh, we just wanted to know if you liked it or not, bro. <laughs> I know I'm the same way, dude. My lady will ask me, like, we'll be watching one of the Marvel movies and she'll ask me a question. And then I'll just start going off on this tangent of, like, the origin of the character and, like, who who they fucking were created by and stuff. And she's like, yeah. I just fucking asked you one simple thing. Yeah. And I'm like, well, you should fucking know me by now. So I'm going to fucking give you the whole fucking backstory of the character, who created it, what year, what the fucking first appearance was. You know, like, I'm going to do yeah. all that. Like, no, a, a friend of mine, a friend of mine, he literally freaking posted on my freaking Facebook. And he's like, hey, so I just read, uh, I mean, I just watched uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. And was like, so do you think they're going to put Adam Warlock in Volume 3? And is that how he became created? And I was like, no, well, actually, he first came about in Fantastic Four, but they obviously had to change that. And blah, 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 blah. But the tune is real. <laughs> but also, like, it, it just I just go off into this whole tangent. It ends yeah. up becoming, like, 17 paragraphs. Like, okay, sorry, yeah. I didn't, didn't But you know what? Thing. That's that's what the, the that's the hardest part for me because everyone's like, oh, you read comics. I've just watched Guardians of the Galaxy. What's gonna happen? And then I'm just like, I, you don't understand. I don't read Marvel. I don't read DC. There's a whole other universe of comics that you don't know about. Leave me alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's yeah. true, man. It's always like, oh, uh, is this character is gonna be there? Is or is, is he dead yet? Like whatever. I'm like, I don't know. I just don't know. Like, I don't care. I don't read those comics. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so hard because for, like, I'm going to, co- like, say outsiders because I don't have any other words. But, like, people who don't read comics, they just assume that because you read, obviously, know everything about Marcy. It's, like, yeah. the, the, the only things you need to know. But, like, yeah. it's hard to explain that, no, actually, there's, like, other comics that you need to read, too, that are not related to Marvel and DC. Yeah. No, like, I, I feel like a lot of people don't understand that either. Like, you know, with the, with uh, Netflix and Amazon Prime, there's, like, this whole new wave of all these indie comics getting adapted to television. And, yeah. And, you know, and, like, you know, like, Old Guard. Old Guard's coming next week. I'm very excited for that. Well, it's going to be a movie and not a, not a series. Lock and Key. Yeah. Just, lo- oh, lock and Key, yeah. I didn't, I didn't watch it. Somebody described it as a fucking CW show. It's, it's a CW show. All right, so, you know the sister in Lock and Key? Mm-hmm. I loved her in the comic. So I watched right. two. I watched two episodes of the of the what do you call of the series, and I and I was just so annoyed by her character and how she was portrayed in the television and in, in the Netflix show that I was like, I can't fucking watch this. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, you you, you know? already know that I get triggered with like movie TV show adaptations, so like I I haven't even watched Luck and Key yet. I just I don't want to, you know. See, okay, so I. Here- um, I have my strong opinions on on adaptations, but I feel like if I ever was completely honest on like social media, I think I a lot of people would unfollow me. You know what I mean? Because like <laughs> the, the hate would be real. You know what I'm saying? Like I fucking cannot stand some of the adaptations. I think they're fucking horrible. They, ahead, they are they are horrible. Most of the time, it's not even related to the comics. They just put like yeah. three characters, and then oops, that's it. Adaptation. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't but, get me started. I, okay. <laughs> so Jen, are you telling me? That you wouldn't watch Amazon Prime's iteration of Paper Girls? I mean, I would try. And like I think I would watch the like the first episode, but I I don't know, you know, like if it's not perfect, forget it. You know what I mean? <laughs> if it's not shot for shot, I don't see, want it. No, exactly. see, I and I agree with her. Like I will always try a show, but I don't get like I used to get super excited when I was a kid or young, not, not even just a kid, like even in my early 20s, right? Mm-hmm. I used to get excited because like we started seeing all these adaptations and then they started to suck. And I'm just like, well, fuck, dude. Like, so I'm very skeptical about it now. Um, I know I said I was excited about Michael Keaton coming back as Batman, but, you know, that's that's little little Ryan that's excited about that. You know, <laughs> um, older Ryan is very skeptical on how they're going to fucking do it. Why the last man? One of my fucking favorite all time series. I'm yeah. very skeptical on how they're going to fucking ad- adapt that. It's had so many problems getting it to actually premiere on TV that I'm like very weary about it. Paper Girls is another one. I feel like Brian K. Vaughn, you have the potential to lose the magic of his writing when you adapt it. If he's not the one writing it, 
it's not going to be this. It's not. It, it probably won't have that same magic. You I know just what I'm saying? feel like for Paper Girls, I have this feeling that they're gonna do too much. That they're gonna try too hard. You know what I mean? It has the potential to be either. It's gonna be one of two things: really great or really f- fucking shitty. I don't think it'll be middle of the ground. I, yeah. I just don't think that. You know, like it's either gonna be great or not. No, no, I, I totally agree. Like, uh, like I watched the boys all the way through. It was okay. Yeah, I haven't watched that. No, it was me okay. Neither. It was. I, I feel like out of all like the iterations, I think the boys was like the the one I, that I really don't have anything like negative nor positive to say. It's like you know what what I do hope what I do hope comes from like all these iterations. You know, we as a comic community got to like tell non comic readers like, yo, read the comic. It's better. Yeah, but the, it's like with Preacher. I love that book. Oh, they fucking man. ruined it. They ruined it with that dumb fucking show. You know, like, what the fuck was that? The person who sold me my the, my first Preacher Volume 1 was the guy at my LCS. And he said, have you watched the movie? I said, no, or the TV show, I don't know. And he, I said, no, it's like, good. So read the comics and never watch this thing. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's fucking perfect. That's what I would say, too. Don't ever watch the fucking show. Yeah. yeah. I, I forced myself too. I forced myself through like six episodes. I'm like, okay, maybe it'll get better. Maybe it'll get better. Yeah. Come on. Let's oh, go. No. Like I was just waiting for it. And, I, and then afterwards I'm like, I just wasted six hours of my fucking life that Let's I will never Let's talk have about ever. really bad adaptation. Lucifer. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even waste my time with that. I but, hey, I'll be honest, I didn't read the comic, but I sure as fuck wasn't gonna watch that show either. So <laughs> it's so not just like it's not even, they just took the same name, basically. That's it. That's the only thing they yeah. did. You yeah. know what I'm really scared about? The, the adaptation I'm worried the most about. I is, know what you're going to say, but say it. It's Sandman. Oh, yeah. Okay, look. Okay, look, 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 look. I'm worried about that. I'm, no, I'm, 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 I'm No, no, I'm, I'm fucking worried, too. But there's like a <laughs> sliver, there's a, there's a sliver of hope is the fact that Neil Gaiman is literally like spearheading the whole thing. Like... He's he he's he's he, he like uh, from what I've read, he's gonna be a very big part of the the entire production. So if if they like essentially give him writing credit, or if they essentially just like use the shit out of source material, I think that it could possibly some be something good because like um, American Gods, the TV series yeah. the, on uh, Stars, I've been watching that. That's like the only inter- like it's not a comic. I mean, it is a comic, but it was a book first. And I think that that's like Neil Gaiman had a very heavy hand in the production of that, too. So I think that with that, that that is what gives me hope for Sandman. But if they fucking ruin fucking Morpheus or death or <laughs> anybody, bro, like just fuck, fuck off Netflix. Yeah, I could I could keep I could just keep going on on this for another yeah. hour. Because so. it's so bad. <laughs> it's just horrible. It's, it's just horrible. It's really bad. It's really bad. And like, I just think, I, but I do look at this. I, I do look at the iterations, the you know the, the the adaptations as a gateway for people to get into comics. Because but it doesn't like, always know, translate. It, it doesn't, doesn't always translate. translate. It does. It, yeah, but like yeah, yeah, but yeah, but you have to you have to consider it like this. Like, let's say. They love the TV show, right? But they've never read the comic, and then they go off and read the comic, and then they love that even more. Is uh-huh. don't, wouldn't you consider that a win? Okay, and what if they hate the fucking adaptation and they never want to pick up a fucking comic book because they fucking saw a shitty adaptation? That means those eyes will never go on the on the real source material. Valid so point. it can go That's one of two ways. Point. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like if somebody fucking watched the preacher show, they're they ain't gonna pick up that fucking comic book because they're gonna be true. like. How could you know what I mean? Like, how could it get better than this? <laughs> my yeah, you know. So I don't know. <laughs> no, it's just, it's like well, I had I had a guy I had a guy yesterday like arguing with me and mad at me because I didn't watch that FX show Legion. I I, I just literally told him like, first off, I don't like the fucking character. <laughs> I don't like fucking Legion. Legion's fucking trash. Fuck that fool. Like fucking fucker with his fucking Dang, white that was, person. That was six, flat that was six top. fucks. That was six yeah. bucks in less than fifteen seconds. Don't fucking, congratulations. Fucking, <laughs> fucking legion. No one cares. Fucking <laughs> schizophrenic psychic. The fuck? That's not schizophrenic. That's called being fucking Professor X's son. Fucking. Or we fucking drag this out forever because this is 
Any last uh, things you guys want to share before we get out of here? I have a I have a list of predator alien demands. I'm just gonna read five because like I ended up with like seventeen. Jesus Christ! You said ten. <laughs> yeah. No. No. Yeah. I know. I had more though. You just like right, the, the the most beautiful the most beautiful thing about the whole predator alien thing coming to Marvel is literally all the possibilities. I'm not saying like do a whole wave of like all sort like you know a whole wave of predator versus alien thing or like you know a massive you know universal event. But just give us a couple comics. That's fine. You know? Mm-hmm. Like, okay. Well, anyway, I'll start with my list. Just the five. Yeah, go ahead. Number one would be Punisher versus Alien versus Predator. That'd be great. <laughs> I'd love the <laughs> shit out of that. Okay. Like, it, it'd just be green blood and bullets and fucking, like, dead bodies hanging from ropes all over the place. It'd be great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then another one, Dutch. If you guys don't know who Dutch is, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger. Get to the chopper. You know, yeah. all that. <laughs> And the Howling yeah. Commandos. That'd be dope. Also, if you want to bring back an obscure character that no one really fucks with anymore in Marvel, man thing. But make him a xenomorph. Make him a fucking alien. That'd be fucking awesome. Okay. And then, you know, <laughs> since symbiotes are crazy, like, popular right now, fucking bond a predator with a fucking symbiote and give this fool even more reason to just tear shit up. And then my final one, Wolverine plus the predator versus xenomorphs that shit would be dope because wolverine be like i smell acid blood and he's just like fucking stabbing people and then there's just death and then body parts and then like you know yeah it's gonna be great i just want ultra violence from this and it's gonna be fantastic <sighs> i'm done okay okay <laughs> jen, jen you, got, you got anything else you want to say before we get out of here I, no i guess i said everything it was really nice no we okay. like we love having you on the show you're welcome anytime Okay, well, I might I might be here more often then because I loved it. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, I mean, I, there's something that you know the crossover lo- uh, Lock and Key and uh, Sandman. I don't know when it's coming out, but you should definitely do a, a special episode for that. I don't know what's happening with that either. I'm yeah, I don't know. With that. <laughs> but I'm obsessed. I, I'm really excited for that. I just don't know like what's happening. I don't know how they're gonna execute that. But I, I trust in Joe Hill. I trust in Neil Gaiman. Like it's gonna be weird. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna. I mean, but Lock and Key was weird. Sandman was fucking weird. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like it's gonna be great. I, I have really high hopes for it, and uh, you know, I would love, I would love to to, to, to get you on the back on the show talking about that. Yay. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning along. This is po- quite possibly our longest episode ever, but <laughs> with good reason. <laughs> but with good reason, because we got really deep into it. And, you know, a large part of that is due to our guest today, Jen. Uh, follow her at Life of a Geeky Mind on Instagram. This is you know, the Comic Lounge podcast. Go ahead and search us up uh, on all streaming uh, all, all streaming outlets like yeah you can find us on facebook instagram and twitter at the comic lounge you can find us at the comic lounge.com we're also on youtube under the comic lounge we put up about so far it's been about three to four episodes a week interviews um comic chat gonna do some deep dives into certain books i got a couple that are recorded i haven't posted yet um the podcast is also on there as well yeah just follow us up and just keep on hitting that like button. Keep on subscribing. Hitting, hitting the subscribe button so we can get that freaking Slim Jim sponsorship. Let's be fucking. <laughs> that's, what we're, that's what we're shooting for over here. Yeah, Slim Jim. Snap into Slim a Slim Jim. <laughs> Snap into a Slim Jim, guys. It's going to be great. <laughs> See, I'll, I'll, we're, we're, we're already a natural for this advertising stuff, bro. Like, <laughs> anyway, we'll All see right, you guys cool. next week. It's going to be awesome. Uh, yeah, and apparently our book is Black Hammer for next week. So if you guys want to read along, you know, shoot us uh, shoot us an email. What's the oh, email yeah. address? Oh on? yeah, the email is the Comic Lounge Pod, P-O-D, at gmail.com. Send us your comments. Um, I don't think yeah, I don't think we had any last week. So hey, you know what? That's cool because yeah. <laughs> that means that, that means no one's complaining and we don't have to clap back at anybody. Please, please send in complaints because Dylan and I both love to clap back. We I'm, I'm, <laughs> I. I'm just like literally waiting for that one. Like, you know what I mean? Come on, send us that hate mail, guys. I will drag this wolf. All right. On that note, let's get out of here. All right. Peace, guys. Peace. Lounge and sun.